Brilliance Audio presents The Last of the Moon Girls by Barbara Davis. Performed by Sarah Mollo Christensen. Althea Moon was dead. That was the gist of the letter. Dead in her bed on a Sunday morning. Dead of a long and wasting illness. Dead and already cremated, her ashes scattered at the rise of the full moon as laid out in her will. The room blurred as Lizzie scanned the letter through a film of tears, the terse lines smearing on the page. With your mother's whereabouts currently unknown, you have been deeded sole possession of Moon Girl Farm. I am forwarding this parcel in accordance with your grandmother's final wishes. There was a signature at the bottom, Evangeline Broussard. The name wasn't familiar, but it was clear that the woman, whoever she was, knew more about Althea's last days than she did. She hadn't even known her grandmother was sick. Lizzie swallowed past the bite of tears, the mingled tastes of guilt and grief salty on her tongue as she reached for the parcel that had accompanied the letter. It was wrapped in brown paper and somehow worse for wear. She stared at the words stamped across the package in red ink. Return to sender. Apparently it had been mailed to her old apartment, returned by the new tenants, and then resent to her office. She'd meant to send Althea one of those change of address cards, but like so much of late, it had fallen through the cracks. She held her breath as she tore away the wrapping then exhaled sharply when she caught a glimpse of heavily tooled black leather. She knew the book well. It was the journal Althea had given her on her 16th birthday, the journal all moon girls received on their 16th birthday. Her fingers quivered as she ran them over the cover, the ribbed spine, the pages with their coarse decal edges, knowing the feel of them by heart. There were eight more just like it back in Salem Creek, locked away in a bookcase in her grandmother's reading room, each named for the author who had penned it. The Book of Sabine, the Book of Dorothy, the Book of Aurore, on down through the generations. Presumably the ninth, the Book of Althea, had now taken its place among them. They were a tradition in the Moon family a rite of passage as each member committed to the path. Painstakingly penned volumes of remedies and recipes, sacred blessings and scraps of womanly wisdom, carefully preserved for future generations. And here was hers, turned up again like the proverbial bad penny, as blank as the day she'd received it. She opened it gingerly, staring at the inscription. To Elizabeth, it's time to write your story. Not Elizabeth. Elizabeth. She couldn't even have a normal name. At 16, she'd wanted no part of the tradition or any other part of her family's strange legacy. She'd wanted to be normal, like other people. And so she'd put the journal in a drawer and ignored it. Holding it now, after so many years, felt like an indictment, a reminder that in spurning this sacred family custom, she had turned her back on everything her grandmother had lived, taught, and believed. She could have pretended, for Althea's sake, gone along with what was expected of her and filled the journal with silly scribblings. Even normal girls kept diaries, pink things with hearts on the cover and flimsy brass locks to keep snoopers at bay. But she'd been too stubborn to go along, determined to break with the moon tradition and map her own future. She'd done it, too, if the shiny new plaque on her office door was any indication. From freshman at Dickerson to intern at Worldwide to creative director of Chenier Fragrances Limited all in the space of eight years. But six months after her coveted promotion, she was still trying to wrap her arms around the new position and the recent flurry of changes in her life. 
there hadn't been time to tell Althea. At least, that's what she'd been telling herself. 